Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam uh, Chairman. The first point I would like to make is uh, about the neutrality and impartiality of the Court of Auditors. Looking through the CVs, the auditors, it seems, are over 40% of them former politicians. If you include former civil servants and those who work for institutions, it's about 75% of the uh, uh, auditors. Um, uh, I think that uh, uh, creates a bit of a conflict of interest. And remember, conflict of interest is all about perceived conflict of interest, not actual conflict of interest. That's the legal definition, and uh, uh, I think we need to be careful about that. I'm concerned about the omission of the figures and further information for the individual case studies and projects you've audited. Previous years, we've got exact details of projects and amounts of money, for examples on misspending. This year, in many cases, the description of these projects are vague and omit budgetary figures. This is not transparent, and it seems to me this is intentional. Another point that makes me question the competence of uh, uh, this is its own uh, budget of the court itself. In the past, we've seen transfer requests from the court seeking to spend mm, 45,000 euros to celebrate its 40th birthday party. That must have been some party. And more recently, you wanted to spend 150,000 euros on iPads with 4G data plans for your middle ma management. I don't know if this sets a, a good example. Coming to the report itself, page 19 states that the EU's liabilities amount to 236 billion euros and assets of 166 billion. Um, I mean, I think any other public or government institution, this would have serious consequences. You know, is the EU going bust? We had a situation back in the UK where the figures didn't add up in uh, a big council, Northamptonshire County Council, and sure enough, uh, 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 within a year of me raising this, uh, it's now been declared bust. It's uh, had to send uh, uh, government officials in to run it. On page 10, uh, for a second year in a row, you offer a qualified opinion on the legality and regularity of payments underlying the accounts, which I'm sure you will be pleased with. However, if a private business received this kind of opinion, it would be a very serious issue for them. On page 25, the error rate in the EU budget spending is stated as 2.4%, which is about 3.2 billion euros of taxpayers' money, which has been basically misspent. You hail this as a big reduction on previous years. However, there seems to be many caveats covering up the reality. Only quantifiable errors are taken into account. Also, only a small sample size of certain transactions are properly audited in each policy area, so the true picture we do not know. And in certain policy areas, such as Heading 3, Security and Citizenship, no error rate was included in the overall figure. And I really must point out that on page 333 it states that any EU foreign aid money paid to third country governments isn't audited and it's assumed no errors have taken place, which I think is a ridiculous proposition to make. Finally, this report only looks at where rules have been broken in relation to EU payments. There are billions more euros wasted through policies, projects and tenders that are unnecessary and wasteful. Therefore, this audit report is not the full story on the waste and squandering of taxpayers' money. I think we need a more honest assessment. Thank goodness that Brexit means we won't have billions misspent by the EU in the future, though if we are still making some contributions, it will still be probably money down the drain. Thank you very much. Mr. Bullock uh, made some comments on the neutrality and impartiality of, of the court because uh, we have a number of politicians, uh, civil servants, etc. You question the qualified opinion. Uh, uh, you also said that the private company wouldn't be happy with the uh, qualified opinion on legality and uh, regularity. Um, I want to assure Mr. Bullock and uh, uh, the Committee on Budgetary Control that uh, the neutrality and impartiality and professionalism of the members of the court and the court as a whole is 
unquestionable. We are bound by international standards, code of ethics. We conduct our audit according to these standards. We have, we have the support of about 900 professional staff. Uh, so that is uh, these standards is our Bible. So we do the same professional work as any uh, public or private external auditor would do. Um, qualified opinion, I, qualified opinion is, um, is a positive step. It's a positive step because for a number of years we've been giving an adverse opinion on legality and regularity. Uh, but um, as far as I know, there aren't many uh, audit authorities in European member states that uh, uh, conduct compliance work and produce and give an opinion on an estimated level of error rate. But we know of another state uh, that uh, produces um, um, uh, an assessment, an estimation of the compliance level, and that is the United States. We mentioned this in the past, and uh, the a representative of the uh, audit authority of the National Audit Office in Parliament some years back made a statement that when asked uh, on the level of their error rate, and the error rate is much higher than uh, the error rate that we deliver in this year's annual report. So, having said that, I, we do not consider that a qualified opinion uh, is bad. It's, it's, it's the opposite. Thank you. In the U.S., uh, the error rate is 10 percent. Uh, Chair, thank you very much. I, I think I have to deal with some of the uh, basic issues because I think uh, the question uh, uh, means that we have to explain what the error rate actually means. We are not in a situation where we can check every single uh, 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 transaction that has occurred. That's simply not uh, possible. Uh, Olaf has about 900 people uh, and uh, some of them work in order, and when we're doing the compliance audits, we can only do it on the basis of random sampling. It's a bit like taking an opinion poll. So people are asked for their opinion, and then you have experts who calculate that. And uh, that's why when you get an opinion poll, you always have a variation of plus or minus 2 to 3 percent. And so uh, we we take a random sample of, say, 700 or 1,000 cases, and we look at them in great detail. And, and then at the end, we end up with a statistic. But uh, the statistic is a, is a reflection based on the mathematical model uh, of what is actually happening. Now, obviously, the, lo uh, the larger the sample is that we look at, the, the higher the, um, uh, the uh, accuracy, but uh, the a scope of the sample that we use means that in the end uh, we have 95% uh, uh, that the, ac the um, error rate would be a variation uh, of uh, plus or minus 1%, and that is included. Uh, so I, we've estimated the rate at uh, 2, two point, uh, four percent and we can say with 95% likelihood uh, that the actual rate would be to lie somewhere between 1.4 and 3.4. That's what we're saying, and we can't say more than that. And so the error rate that we're measuring is only a likely uh, rate. The comments made by Mr. Bullock, I just wanted to say, uh, the Court of Auditors doesn't select its auditors. Uh, they are proposed by the member states, and uh, the member states... Uh, uh, have very different traditions as to who they appoint, both in terms of their professional backgrounds, uh, also their approach, the previous uh, positions that they have held. And uh, as usual in the European Union, these national traditions are respected. 
And um, with regard to our own budget expenditure, I can assure you that everything that we uh, spend is approved by the budget authorities and we are audited by an external uh, auditor. Generally, it's one of the big four, so we are audited and uh, uh, there haven't been problems with regard to the issues that you mentioned.